report. Hanging at the fish report. Hanging at the fish report. Hanging at the fish report. Before your latest news in high school sports, tuning in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report, hanging at the fish report. Hanging at the fish report. You got Craig and TK and had that deep tune in at the fish report. Coming to you live hanging from Studio F report. in Rushi, Ohio. It's the Fish hanging Report the fish Live report. Show with your hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome everyone to another Fish Report Live. I'm Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. Back in our sound room, we've got TK and Heavy D going to be joining them a little bit later in the show. And Ken, you know in Fish Report Live, we try to report on success. We try to follow what's trending. We try to ride that wave. We try to get the biggest and best guests on this show, don't we? We do. <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. Absolutely, you know. And uh, when it comes to high school sports in the local area, Craig, we do nothing but the top. And uh, tonight is no different. We're going to talk to Fort Laramie junior star golfer Emily Knopf. Emily has been one of the most successful golfers in the history of the Shelby County League, also one of the most successful golfers in the history of Fort Laramie High School. And we're really looking forward to talking to Emily tonight and seeing what she has in store for her postseason run this season. And Craig, the hottest coach, the hottest football team in Division One right now are the Sydney Yellow Jackets. Really looking forward to talking to the head coach of the Yellow Jackets, Adam Dungis. And uh, he's got his jackets off to a 3-1 start, Craig. We're going to talk to him about his success and how freshman phenon Andre Gordon has been leading the Jackets to a great start. Yeah, I think those Sydney Yellow Jackets are actually Division Two, Ken, but I just saw them in the state uh, computer polls that came out on Tuesday. They're number 12 in uh, Region 6, and uh, all they have to do is move up a few, few more spots and get themselves in the playoff position for the postseason. Absol absolutely, Craig. You know, they've got some nice wins already this year. They've got uh, the G-Walk North coming up. They can accumulate a lot of points once league play starts. And, again, really looking forward to that interview tonight. All right, well, speaking of Sydney football tonight's poll question is a sydney football question isn't it it is craig and speaking of freshman phenon andre gordon he is the quarterback of the sydney yellow jackets he's got his passing running he's a triple threat quarterback and craig the question is the poll question is andre gordon what will be his best sport in a sydney yellow jacket uniform will it be football basketball or track and field or all of the above now, you know, I like these poll questions uh, a little bit more than the trivia questions that we used to ask, or maybe I was a little bit uh, tired of the trivia question, but the poll question, there's uh, it's, it's kind of just your opinion, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's an opinion question. You know, there's a lot of people go on, they see Fish Report, they click on that, and they think, okay, you know, I want to I want to answer this question tonight, and, it, and it's interesting to see the results by the end of the show, what people feel about our question. Yeah, no right or wrong answer, just give us your opinion, and if you're watching us on the Fish Report live page, you can scroll down, answer that question. And check the results if you're watching us on NK Telco or Game Face Ohio. Ken and I will have those results for you at the end of the show. All right, Ken, well, let's get things out, get things started talking some golf. And last week we had Rushi Boys coach Terry Doherty on this show talk to him about the SCAL tournament. They were getting ready to uh, head into the following day. And when the dust settled over there, we had some co champions, didn't we? Yes, we did, Craig. Uh, Rushi came in at 6 0 in the league. Anna came in at 5 1. The, the, um, the course was held at Shelby Oaks Golf Club in Sydney, and uh, Anna was led by junior star Zach Watcher and Craig, the two-time Shelby County League Player of the Year, shot a fantastic round of golf. He led the Yellow Jackets to the victory over Rushi. Rushi still got second on the day, Craig, therefore finishing as co-champions with the Anna Rockets. Yeah, Anna and uh, Rushi, uh, uh, two, uh, two very two good teams all year. We knew that it was going to come down to them at the end, and uh, Fort Laramie uh, has a good team as well, ended up finishing third, I believe, and uh, looking forward to more from those guys in the postseason. Speaking of the postseason, that starts next week already for both the boys and girls. Let's check out the, the local boys, see where they're playing at next week, and uh, see what they have to do to advance. Craig, the Rushi boys and all the D3 boys will be uh, in our area will be playing at Beachwood Golf Course in Arcanum. Uh, the match will be held next Tuesday, September 29th. The top four teams will advance as well as the top four individuals. 
uh, away from that tournament this year, Craig, a lot of good golf teams, including Anna, Miami East, West Liberty, Salem, are all Division Two this year. So that bodes well for the Rushi Raiders and the Fort Loamy Redskins. The uh, Max schools, Minster, Marion Local, and such, they'll be playing up in Lima on Hawthorne Hills next Thursday. A little smaller sectional there, Craig. Just three teams advance and three individuals. Yeah, one team that's always good up there as well is the uh, LCC. That, that I'm sure they'll be in the uh, the running as well up there. And then let's take a look at the girls' can. Now, they only have two divisions in girls, unlike the boys that have three. And where are the local girls playing at, and what do they have to do to advance? The local girls, Craig, Rushi, Fort Lauderdale, Versailles, and such, they'll be playing at Versailles. Stillwater Valley Golf Course uh, next Wednesday, September 30th. In that uh, match, four teams and the top four individuals will advance. Craig, in that match, I like Versailles, Miami East, Fort Laramie, and look for the Rushi Raiders to, to get out of there and go advance onto the district play. And then the Max Schools, Craig, Minster, Coldwater and such, they'll be playing up north at Salina at the Fox's Den Golf Course on Tuesday. Again, a smaller sectional, just three teams advancing and three individuals. All right, Campbell, one girl we'll certainly be keeping our eye on next week is Fort Laramie junior Emily Knopf. She's actually advanced to the district tournament the last two years. Her freshman year, she even went to state. We're going to talk about that. We're happy to have her live on the phone right now. Emily, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, listen, well, welcome back. The, the last time we talked to you on this show was two years ago. You just advanced from district play to the state tournament. And I want to ask, Emily, what, what have you learned or how have you matured as a golfer from that freshman year to your sophomore year to, to, to now as a junior? Emily, do oh, we, Yeah. I wanted to ask you, how, how have you changed as a golfer from your freshman year to, to where you're at now as a junior? Um, well, I definitely think I'm smarter. The last time we talked, I'd been playing golf for only about two years. So um, I guess as the years go on, I, pro- I try to progress as a golfer and become smarter and learn how to play the game a little better. Um, now I've been playing for four years, and I feel like I have learned a lot, but there is so much more to learn. All right, well, let's talk about last year for a moment. Uh, you know, it was a very successful regular season for you, but the postseason ended a, a little sooner than I'm sure you expected. And, and I say that because you missed qualifying for state as a sophomore after you'd qualified as a freshman. And, and you know, unfortunately, there's this expectation that if you do it once, you should do it every year. And, and some people might not realize how hard that actually is. Uh, Emily, what, what went wrong at the district tournament last year? And is this something you've been able to address? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I have addressed it. Um, just a few weaknesses that I've tried to fix there. But um, like every golfer knows, if you get a bad bounce, you just have little things go wrong. And it um, kind of changes how you play. So I feel like last year at District, I just didn't really score well. But I feel like I hit the ball well and just things didn't go my way. Hi, Emily. This is Ken. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the postseason, uh, the sectional play coming up here just next week, uh, next Wednesday. Uh, it will be held on Stillwater Valley Golf Course in Versailles, a course that uh, you're very familiar with. What are you and the Redskin teammates uh, looking forward to, and what do you have to do well to advance as a team? Um, I think we all need to play the best we can. Um, I haven't done anything different during the high school season than I have during my summer season. I've been practicing the same, and pretty much competing the same, but um, my teammates are not as serious during the summer as I am, but they work really hard during the school season, and they are really getting better and really working hard at their game to play well at sectionals and hopefully advance to districts. Emily, let's talk a little bit about golf in general. It's very different when you compare it to basketball or baseball or football, of which are all played on similar courses or courts no matter where you play at. Uh, Golf is totally different. How does Stillwater Valley Golf Club uh, treat you well, and what uh, challenges does it present to you as a golfer? Well, for me, overall, Stillwater is a huge challenge. Um, I'm not really sure why, because it it shouldn't be, but I tend to struggle there more than I do in most area courses. Um, Coach Fridley and I know that Stillwater is shorter and trickier than most courses but he tells me that I just can't overpower it and um if I don't overpower it and just try to like hit the fairway and hit the green I usually I'm able to play a little better so yeah 
All right, Emily. Hey, one more question and we'll let you go. But, uh, you know, I got a chance actually to watch you last, uh, uh, actually the beginning of this month, back on September 3rd, you're playing uh, our Rushi Raiders. And, uh, you know, I saw your coach, your high school coach, Mike Anthony in attendance. And you just mentioned another one of your coaches, Rob Fridley. Uh, he was he was following you around the course as well. How does that dynamic work with uh, with your high school coach and, and I guess what is what your personal coach all on the course at the same time? Well, for Mr. Anthony, of course, I have five other teammates playing, so it's hard for him to get to watch me the whole time, and especially, I mean, with my other teammates, they all need help as well. So Coach Anthony and I usually discuss my game plan before the tournament starts or before the match, and during the match, he pretty much, like, just watches the other girls and focuses on them to give them help. And then Coach Fridley comes and watches me sometimes, and when he comes, he just, like, comes to look at my strengths and weaknesses so that we can address them during our next practice session. Um, I'm always trying to get better, and in order to do that, we need to figure out what's my weaknesses so we can fix that and move forward. Well, listen, Emily, uh, we really appreciate you being on our show tonight. Uh, you've had a great uh, season again uh, for the Fort Laramie Redskins. Uh, good luck on the links, uh, especially in the postseason with you, and uh, you know we uh, wish you the best of luck, and uh, hopefully you make it all the way to Columbus this year. Thank you so much for having me, and you guys do a great job with all this sport, with covering all the high school sports in the area. All right, thanks, Emily. Yep. All right, that was Fort Laramie star golfer Emily Knopf, and uh, Ken. By the time she's finished at Fort Laramie, she's going to have about just every one of those records over there for the Redskins. Yes, she will, Craig. Guys, uh, she's currently broken. I think every record that uh, another great golfer from Fort Laramie, Brooke Albers, who went on to play college golf. Uh, Emily has broken every one of them records except for one, Craig, and I think that's the lowest score from a senior golfer, and, and the reason is, obviously, she's just a junior. Yeah. So, Well, I imagine she'll t make a run at that next year, her senior year. I would say play. there's a good chance. All right, well, listen, we're going to take a short break, but stay right there because when we come back, we're going to talk some football, including that big interview with Sydney coach Adam Dunges. Welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live, everyone. And, Ken, before the break, we were talking some golf. Now we're going to talk a little uh, little rougher, tougher sport, uh, a little bit more contact in the sport, and that, of course, is football. Uh, tonight we're going to focus on the G-Walk, uh, talk about them from time to time. And let's start things out tonight by looking at the standings, see where we're at in the G-Walk right now. Well, Craig, you know, we don't talk a whole lot of G-Walk football. Most of the football we talk is always Mac-related. So we're really looking forward tonight to discuss some, some G-Walk with our uh, – 
uh, loyal followers out there. And uh, the Sydney Yellow Jackets, of course, they're out a three and one start along with Vandalia Butler. Uh, Trotwood Madison obviously is always going to be good. They're sitting at three and one as well. Greenville and Pickway, they're at two and two, and Troy at one and three. So conference play for most of these teams actually will not start until a week from Friday. But, uh, you know, all these games are very big when it plays into computer points and postseason standings. All right, Cam. Well, speaking of those Sydney Yellow Jackets, they're off to their best start since 2007. As I mentioned at the top of the show, they're currently ranked number 12 right now in Region 6 of the Division II computer rankings. Uh, that came out on Tuesday. Uh, Sydney will eventually need to move up to number 8 to make it to the playoffs, something they've only done, I believe, maybe once before. But uh, here to talk about with us live right now is the head coach of the Yellow Jackets, Adam Dunges. Coach, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Guys, thanks for having me. I'm... Uh... I'm ecstatic to be a part of the uh, famed and fabled fish report. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it's hard to be here. You guys do uh, a nice job uh, covering high school sports for the Dayton area, and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. All right, Coach. Well, thanks for those compliments. Uh, but uh, listen, talk about challenges. I, I read back in the paper back in August where you were coming into this season uh, with just a, a two and eight record from last year, and you were losing something like seven, eight, nine starters. Uh, now here you are today. You're sitting at three and one, which means you've already eclipsed last year's win total. How do you explain that? Uh, we've done a nice job of just getting, you know. Mainly goes back to our seniors. Uh, we've done a lot of work in the off season. Uh, you know, I felt our our senior leadership was a little lacking the previous year, and that goes back on me. I didn't do a good enough job of getting those guys prepared to lead our football team, and we did a lot more this off season. We brought the, we took the seniors on a retreat to Miami University, went there for overnight, and you know, we did a lot of different things with them um, as far as team building and bonding, and just getting them to to learn to get those underclass them to play for them, not with them. Um, and they've done a good job of getting those younger guys to buy into, you know, you really play for those seniors on that football team. And, uh, you know, it, it really goes back to a lot of those guys. Uh, I've also got to give a lot of credit to my coaching staff. Uh, we've got probably right four new guys to our coaching staff. Uh, they've mixed in well with the four returning members of our, of our varsity staff. Um, you know, I, I kind of joke at times, I'm just more or less a, a glorified paper pusher and cheerleader. I don't really do a whole lot as far as X's and O's because I got guys that are really good at that. Um, I'm comfortable enough to know what my strengths are and, and my guys around me strengths are, and those guys do an excellent job. So between my coaching staff and, and my senior leadership, uh, it's it's had a lot to do with uh, our success so far this early early part of the year. All right, Coach. Well, speaking of strength, one guy that's got to have a lot of strength in your team is your big offensive lineman, Lorenzo Taborn. I've been told he's being recruited by some D1 colleges in Ohio. Uh, he's also been selected to play in a prestigious bowl game down in Florida. What kind of player is Lorenzo, and what's that all about? Lorenzo has has, has been neat to watch him grow up as a kid. Um, when he was a freshman, junior high, you know, he was a big kid, and you know, I, I don't think he was a real mature kid. He'll be the first one to tell you that. And over the years, he's kept growing up, and the the progress he's made as far as being a person in the last in the last year has been tremendous. Um, he's voted a team captain this year, which. I wouldn't have said that was going to happen a year ago, but he's he's grown up a lot, um, and that's that's been the biggest part of it. And now he's also that's developed into him just becoming a tremendous football player for us. Uh, we 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 go behind him majority of the time when we run the ball; it's going his way. Uh, the biggest attribute that we've seen when we got him to camps over the summer is that a lot of coaches just like how nasty he is. Um, you know, when you play that O line, it's it's not a it's not a fun position and. And Lorenzo is able to bring that nastiness um, to the table, and you know he's done a really nice job of complementing the rest of our O line. Our our O line has um, got some other good players on there, and, and you know those five guys and a couple of guys that we rotate in right now are really been the success behind our our offense right now. Um, you know, we've got two other seniors on that O line, and Devin Santos and Jack Beatty, and a uh, junior and a sophomore that kind of get a lot of playing time there too. And Lorenzo's definitely been the guy. He's 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 taken hold that leadership role and you know when you're six foot four 320 pounds you can do a lot of good stuff and uh, when you become a better leader and guys want to follow you uh, he's, he's done a tremendous job hi coach this is ken uh craig talked about a few of your challenges before but one of your biggest challenges to start the season was when you lost junior starting quarterback jack fiesel you replaced him with a kid over there that a lot of people in this area knew a lot about coming into this season, but not necessarily football-related, and that's freshman, the star athlete, 
quarterback Andre Gordon. Tell us a little bit of how he has transitioned, making a huge step from junior high sports to a freshman playing D2 high school football. Well, we're not afraid around here of, of starting freshmen. Um, you know, I've, I've been the head coach now for five years, and I've started a freshman every year. And we're starting two of them this year with the third one getting um, some playing time on special teams. So if you're good enough to play, you're going to play. And it was obvious. You know, sometimes you kind of wonder how they're going to make that transition, like you said, when they go from playing with the smaller ball and smaller athletes, and they're usually the bigger kid and all that kind of stuff, how they're going to transition to playing Division two, Division three, Division one football at our level. And, you know, we, we, when we broke in for camp this summer, you know, our quarterback situation was a strong 1A in Jack Fiesel, and, and Andre was a 1B, to be honest with you. Uh, we went in, Jack probably got 70% of the reps, and Andre got 30% of the reps. And, you know, Jack was named a, a, a captain of our football team as a junior, and that doesn't happen a whole lot uh, when a junior is getting named a captain, especially when you got 19 seniors. So, obviously, we're a better football team if Jack's playing for us, uh, but I'm not trying too hard because not too many people lose their junior starting captain quarterback and get to replace him with a kid the caliber of Andre Gordon. Um, he's, he's a special kid. Uh, you know, he's, he's still learning how to play quarterback. He's a pretty good athlete, but I've never really been around a kid that can just you teach him one thing, you show him how to correct it, and he just fixes it and just goes play football. Um, tremendous instincts. Uh, you know, he's, he's going to be a big-time player in this area. Uh, a lot of people already know about him from basketball, and he's a tremendous basketball player. But he's also opening some eyes right now as far as the football side. And, and quite honestly, he can do whatever he wanted to do. You know, if he wanted to play soccer, he could play soccer. If he wanted to go bowling or swimming, he'd be tremendous at that, too. He's just he's just that good of an athlete. I got him in class and out of a one. He's, he's a great student, tremendous person, and um, it's just really neat to be around him. Coach, let's look a little bit about Friday uh, night's opponent, Toledo Wake. Uh, they come in with a 1-3 and three record. First of all, how, how does this team end up on your schedule? And second of all, what do you know about them and what will it take to uh, get out of there with a victory? Uh, you know, with the G-Walk, you got a couple crossover games with the divisions. And we made the decision a few years back that we didn't like the crossover that we were presented with. Um, and against a central division team, and it wasn't a good matchup for us. It's just a school that was much larger than us, and we can mutually get out of that game. So we were able to mutually get out of that game, and, you know, it's not easy to find football games. Uh, and We wanted to find someone that was a little bit more competitive with us and being on kind of our level division-wise and school-wise. And it's not just at the varsity level because you also got to play their JV and, and play their freshman school too, or freshman team. So, you know, last year we went over to the other side of Ohio and played Canfield, which is over by the Hall of Fame in the Canton area. Um, and that was a one-year contract, and this year we were able to get Toledo Wake uh, to come to us for a one-year contract. And, and next year with the rescheduling of the G-Walk, uh, we don't have to worry about that anymore. The crossover games are a little bit uh, better than they were in the past few years with us going to four divisions and, and adding a couple more teams. So it works out a little bit better next year. So it's an interesting interesting game. Uh, Toledo's coming down here. I think Sydney's only played maybe two or three Toledo public schools and 100-plus years of playing football. And they got a second-year coach last year that a new young guy came in there, um, got them to 5-5, five and five, which has been pretty good for them uh, in that Toledo Public League. They went 4-1 in the Toledo Public League. And this year they're struggling a little bit, but, you know, they're looking at this game just like we are. They, they want to head into their, their conference schedule on a full head of steam and, um, and going in the right direction. They start the Toledo Public League schedule the following week, and we start our G-Walk North schedule. So we're both trying to look to go in the head, you know, move in the right direction as we head into our league schedule. Hey, Coach Lesson, one more question, and we'll let you go. But, uh, you know, along with teaching your boys the game of football, you teach them a little bit uh, about, the, about the game of life along the way. And I know earlier this year uh, not, that was never more evident than when you donated some used football equipment to a uh, ministry overseas. Can you tell us what that was about real quick? Yeah, it was pretty interesting. You know, it's just one of those email chains you're on with other football coaches. And, you know, I've been holding on. I, I come from a farm growing up, and so I'm used to not – throwing things away. There's always a value in something. At some point, you're going to want to use that. So we've been upgrading all of our equipment here the past few years, and it was hard for me to throw away some of that older equipment, even though we didn't need it anymore. I figured at some point, someone was going to want that stuff. And one of those email chains came along that, you know, I think it was um, Serbia. They had uh, some football programs going over there, and, and they wanted some uh, used equipment. They didn't care how old it was or what it looked like. And you know, I, I had plenty of that. All I had to do was get to Ohio Northern. So I had a get my dad's big box trailer, and uh, we'd uh, set about 40 shoulder pads and a couple dozen helmets and 
some blocking stuff, and we we spent all kinds of stuff over there. It was kind of neat to see uh, the pictures of those kids on the other side of the world putting this equipment on, and I made sure I put Sydney little stickers on it. So that way, I, when we saw the pictures, I knew it was my equipment, and those kids could put that stuff on. And you know, we try to do a lot of stuff like that. We did a lot of different things in the off season just to. You know, just to let our kids know about the community. It's no different than most high school football coaches or really any coaches of any sports do in this area. Everybody does a tremendous job at that. Just trying to get those guys a little bit more real-life experience and realizing there's there's more to just playing a football game and wins and losses. You're you're going to have to eventually move on from this game and, and, uh, and get out into the real world and just try to show them some things that you, you can do when you get out in that world. Coach, well, listen, that's great stuff. We really appreciate uh, you taking time out of your schedule to be on our show tonight with us. And, again, congratulations on the great start. Best of luck the rest of the season. And uh, go Yellow Jackets. Hey, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Coach. All right, that was the head coach of the Sydney Yellow Jackets, Adam Dungess. And, Ken, you know, I read an article uh, I know several years ago in the Dayton Daily News uh, where they were talking about whether Sydney even belonged in the G-Walk. And, uh, you know, I know that's uh, uh, they were falling on hard times at the time. And, granted, they haven't started league play yet, but they seem to have kind of turned the corner, I think. Absolutely, Craig. And, you know, everybody goes through the ups and downs when it comes to uh, success on the football field or basketball field or whatever it might be. And, and uh, you know, Sydney right now has definitely uh, got things pointed in the right direction. And a lot of that credit goes to, goes, goes to Coach Dungess. It certainly does. All right, Ken. Well, you know, speaking of football, you've heard of these NFL eliminator pools. Absolutely. Absolutely. My son Ross, you know, who's been on the show several times uh, before, has actually been in one the last couple of years. I know every eliminator pool has you know, different rules. The, the the one that he's in is very simple. All you got to do is pick one winner every week. Okay? One out of sixteen. Sixteen games a week. You got to pick one winner. S- That's easy. Simple enough. That's easy. That's easy. But uh, I tell you what, the local one that he's been in this year. It, we're heading to week three, okay? Mm-hmm. At the beginning of, of, of the season, Ken, there was 1,174 teams or entries in this eliminator pool. Mm-hmm. After two weeks, there's 111 left. Really? Over 1,000 people couldn't pick one game right. <laughs> well, or couldn't get game right two, for two weeks. Wow, that's amazing. I, and I thought I I, t- I tell him it's easy. Why can't you you know Why can't you keep advancing? And and he's like, Well, Dad, why don't you get in? Well, I, I guess I must be too afraid to get in. But I've decided that here at Fish Report Live, we're going to start our own eliminator pool, and we're going to do it with high school games. Right. I know we're heading into week five here already, but uh, I've got six games that I've picked for the crew here, and we're gonna we're all four of us are going to get in this thing, and we're going to see if we can survive in advance. This so will be a lot uh, of let, fun. Let, let's check out the games that we got picked for this week. There's six games. And uh, the, the game we just talked about, Toledo Wade at Sydney, is one of those games. We got Xenia at Troy. We've got a couple good Mac games Minster at Versailles, St. Henry at Marion Local. Uh, we got a, a nice matchup, Troy Christian at Covington. And then finally, Hardin Northern at Fort Laramie. And I'm going to start back in the sound room. Let's go back to TK and Heavy D checking with those guys. And TK, simple enough. All you got to do is pick one winner. Let, let's hear it. Give, give me one winner. Let, let's get a little sound back there. There we go. There now we go. got her. We got the right buttons going now. I've been ciphering for a little while, and I'm going to go kind of local here. Versailles and Minster at Versailles. Minster coming off some tough losses, but Versailles is going to win their homecoming game this weekend and put the third loss in a row on Minster. So mark it down. The Tigers over the Wildcats over at HB Holefield. Does he know they won state last year? He's going against the state champions. You know what? It's homecoming in Versailles, Ohio, and you always win homecoming game, right? All right. Well, uh, Heavy D, how about you? What you got a got a good pick for us? Boy, I'm gonna I'm gonna take an easy path here, and I don't know if it's easy or not, but it, it looks easy based on the records. I'm gonna go with Harden Northern coming to Fort Laramie uh, this Friday night. I'm gonna pick Harden Northern over Fort Laramie just based on records. We we got uh-huh. a lot of we got a lot of Fort Laramie fans watching tonight, and yeah. Heavy D that hurts. went against the Redskins. <laughs> That's right. I had two nephews go through the program at Fort Laramie, but. I, I think, Ken, you're going to talk about a little bit of a change of tide here for Fort Laramie coming up, but I think well, it's going to take them another week to get uh, get back on the I, winning I, path. If I could comment, uh, interrupt you there, and, and I would have to agree with Heavy D on that. I think the Redskins, too, this isn't my pick, okay, because I don't want to pick who Heavy D picked. Okay. But I think the Redskins are going to start out 0-5, and, and they're going to finish 5-5. Five and five. Wow. A, a okay. complete 180, huh? Coach Parks is going to go 5-5. Five and five. He's going to start 0-5. He's going to finish 5-5. Okay. I'm taking the Buccaneers of Covington. 
They're three and one, Craig. They got a nice team again this year. Uh, they're taking on a Troy Christian team, Craig, that I realize is undefeated, but take the Buccaneers in a route. All right. Well, listen, Troy Christian, uh, three and zero, oh, going against Troy Christian, and and. Uh, all right. I, I, I look at strength of schedule, Craig. All right. Well, last time they played, I think I read uh, this morning, was 2002, and it was a playoff game. So uh, that'll be a big battle on yep. Friday night. And I'm going to go with that very first game, Toledo Wait at Sydney. Our coach hopefully still watching tonight. So I'm picking Adam Dungeness and, and the Sydney Yellow Jackets. Ken, I, I looked at that uh, – that Toledo weight, they've got one victory, and it was against a Michigan team. And uh, I think all Ohio teams beat Michigan teams anyway, so uh, that doesn't really count. So <laughs> I'm picking the Yellow Jackets and a win, and uh, there you go. There you all go. Right. There, there's Fun our eliminator stuff. pool. We all picked a different team. So we'll see who advance, survives and advances next week. Right. All right. Well, good stuff there. That's going to uh, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for us tonight. We do have one more thing, and that's the poll question. Uh, Ken, why don't you read the poll question again, and TK can check on the telemetrics. All right. Uh, for our listeners out there, we talked to Sydney coach Adam Dungess tonight. We also talked about his star freshman quarterback. The question is, at Sydney High School, which sport will Andre Gordon excel in? Will it be football, basketball, track and field, or all of the above? Like Coach Dunn just said, he could do bowling or swimming, and he would probably be very good at that as well. But let's go back to TK and see what our uh, poll answers were. Well, maybe it's because uh, what Coach said, people haven't seen him play much football, so they don't know how good he is. But everybody's picking basketball for the most part. 77% say basketball. A couple of uh, footballs and a couple of all of the aboves. But uh, they like him in basketball, heavy. I, I know we were watching a few YouTube videos before the sh show started of Andre Gordon playing basketball. He's not bad. He's not bad. <laughs> I seen him play at Rushi's Open Gym last year as an eighth grader. I was impressed. Ken, what do you think uh, Yogi Berra would say of Andre Gordon? What would he say? He would probably say, hmm, boy, I'd have to think of a good quick Yogiism <laughs> uh, for the late Yogi Berra, and he had a whole handful of them. And, uh, With all those options, when you come to a fork in the road, I think you just take it. You just take you it. Go. That's a good one. All right, well, that's a great way to end the show tonight. <laughs> do want to say special thanks to our guest tonight, Emily Knopf from Fort Laramie, and Coach Adam Dungess from Sydney. Thanks to the viewers as well for tun tuning in tonight. Ken and I and the crew will all be back again next week, same time, same place. But until then, have a great rest of the week, and good night, everyone. Hanging at the fish report. 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 For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull. When you tune in to the fish report. Hanging at the fish report.